What you are about to witness will undoubtedly change your life. Well, maybe not your life, but at least the way you've been walking. Thanks to one incredible cook and fantastic teacher, Mr. Steve. Yeah. <laughs> Born and raised in Hong Kong, Stephen started his training at the age of 10. Since coming to North America in 1963, he's used his own special brand of humor to teach millions of people his incredible walking techniques through cooking classes, radio and television shows, magazines, newspaper articles, and best-selling books. If you're ready to be the envy of the neighborhood... Are you ready? If you seek to become immensely popular due to your culinary creations, and if you want to walk like you've never walked before, then join Stephen Yan in his studio kitchen and learn to walk before you run. Fantastic! I am going to show you all the basic steps you need for a fantastic walking experience. First thing you need is a walk. There are many ways to use a walk. You can use it in the rain, rain falling on my top of my head. Or you can use it in the snow as a toboggan. Or you can use it for gold panning or washing your clothes. What the heck? <laughs> Basically, there are two kinds of walk that you can run into. First is the stainless steel with the copper bottom walk. This type of walk requires no scrubbing or seasoning. Just walk right in and start walking. And this one obviously is not stainless steel. When it is new, you have to walk your butt off to scrub it and season it with soap and water until it turns black. Okay? Now, old walk never die, they just stir fly away. <laughs> but either one will get your work done. If you have an electric stove, very simple, you just uh, use this special electric stand. Just put your walk on top of this and it will direct the heat to the bottom of the walk. Also, you can use it on a table to prevent the walk from doing that walk and roll. <laughs> but if you are cooking with gas, it's very simple. Just put your wok directly on top of this uh, stove and you can start cooking. What the heck? <laughs> well, what the heck do you think this is? <laughs> you think this is a uh, fly smacker or was spanking and all kinds of things? This is actually is a special curved blade spatula for people to walk on the wall. And then you won't wreck your walk at all because the curve, you know, like this. It makes your stirring and the turning very easy. All right? Now, you cannot walk without a good pair of shoes, and you cannot walk without a good cleaver. And this cleaver is a clever cleaver. Oh, well, it's so clever that you can slice your food without losing your finger and chop without losing your head. And with this cleaver, and you can go to your boss about a race or go to the bank manager for a loan. <laughs> See, that's good. Now, let's go to the basic ingredients. This is called the light soy sauce. Now, the light soy sauce is light color. It doesn't stain, you know, the food that you're cooking. All right? And it's uh, a little bit salty. Now, this is called the dark soy sauce. Now, you see the difference? It's dark, less salty, and a sweet taste. And use it when you want to add color to your food. Or use it as a body suntan lotion. Okay, if you need help, you use a few drops of sesame seed oil. That would help to get some fragrance aroma. We call it the Chanel number no. 9 in Chinese cooking. <laughs> now, for makeup of the good cooking, you need this wonderful tapioca starch. Just ordinary starch. Uh, you can use the cornstarch if you want, if you can't get the tapioca starch. Now, all you have to do is just add equal amount of water. Any kind of water will be fine. Or you can use a cold chicken broth if you want. And then you put some of the light soy sauce and a few drops of sesame seed oil and a little bit of the oyster flavor sauce. Okay? Then you can uh, cook this, you know, very well, like we do in a restaurant. Put a few pinch of this uh, sugar there and that is the gourmet sauce that you get from the restaurant cooking. Now, you have seen all the basic utensils and ingredients. Remember, assemble all the ingredients in one place before you cook and allow yourself plenty of time for preparation. Walk before you run, because Chinese cooking is just like making love. It makes a long time to prepare, but the actual cooking time is very short. <laughs> Now, we are 
are going to start our day way easily. Started with this, what we call the fresh asparagus. You see, I hate to cook asparagus in my restaurant because the people, they never leave me any tips. <laughs> and I'm going to show you how to use the cleaver to handle all the cooking. And that is the easiest way and the best way to uh, start your cooking. Now, hold your cleaver properly by putting two fingers on one side and one finger here so that nobody can turn your cleaver and you can have 100% control. Now, when you cut, all you have to do is just use the knuckle of the other hand and rest the side of the, bl the blade next to it, just like this. And always leave the corner of the knife down, like this. And then go the downward forward motion, just like this. Hey, now there you are. You can cut all the way you want. See how simple it is? You can cut and then move, and cut and move, and cut and move, and you can make some noise, you know, if you want. <laughs> See, very simple. Now, if you want to prevent this uh, carrot from uh, rolling back and forth, just use a little bit vegetable pillar. Go, for, go over it a couple of times, it will stay there. It will never give you the walk and roll situation. Now, just go like this. It will stay all the time. Isn't that great? Okay, you move it to the side, and here comes a little snow piece. Snow piece. Oh, this is a nice little sweet piece. And I want to show you that this is the way it looks. It has a little bit of fibers there and the, and the stem over there. All you have to do is just hang on to this side, and then try to peel all the way there. And then when it comes to the end, just go like this. Now, that's the way to handle it. Then what about the asparagus? Oh, that's my favorite, you know, vegetable. Now, you have to know how to shop for this uh, asparagus. Look at the end, you know, there. Sometimes a little bit rough. Okay, now, the best way to find out whether uh, you should eat this or where you should cut it is to break off this part. Now, you break off right there. This part is no good because there's a lot of fibers around the edges. And this part is good. But you want to save this, you can peel this. Uh, fibers off and you can eat the inside. There you are. This is for very good budgeting. Now, there you are. Get your cleaver. Away we go. Then we cut it into the length that you want. Now cut it about two inches length. That's it. Now we got them all. And then I want to show you another good way of this uh, cleaver. Now a lot of people spend time wasting time at home to uh, peel the garlic. But in Chinese cooking, we have a very good way. Now, on this end of the garlic, you just cut a little bit neck there and put it like this and use the cleaver and say, hi yeah. And then, oh, now the whole thing will come off. Now, isn't that great? And uh, very simple. Huh. Now, in the Western world, you have a saying called uh, an apple a day, keep the doctors away. But in China, we say a garlic a day, you keep everybody away. You agree, right? <laughs> now, then I want to show you how to uh, skin your onion here. This is a fantastic onion. Now, Okay, all you have to do is just cut this, not all the way down, just three quarters of the way, and turn around, you go this way, now, that's it. Then what you do is just hang on to this, and peel over there, make sure it go over here, and then you hang on to this side, now, there you are, just peel this, make this thing, eh? Now, this very simple, and then exciting, and then you don't have to cry all day until your in-law gets home. Now, there you are. <laughs> then, after you... Get this, you want to cut it into half? Very simple, just watch me. Now like this. Oh, hey, now how do you like it? Eh? Right, now then we cut this into small pieces using our clever cleaver, and then we are ready to do the walking. Right, you turn on the heat, make sure you use high heat, because in Chinese cooking, the cooking time is very short, and everything has to be done very quickly so that you don't ruin the vitamin or the nutrition of all the vegetables. Make sure the wall is hot. How do you know it's hot? Put your hand down there. When you feel a lot of heat coming out, then it's hot. But don't touch the wall. Otherwise, you will say, ouch. <laughs> That's a wrong way to do it. Now, when it's hot, then you use two tablespoonful, one and two, two tablespoonful of vegetable oil. You see, Chinese cooking is low calorie and then it's very nutritious. See, you don't normally see a fat Chinese running around in the street. You know why? If you see one, we lock them up. <laughs> okay, one is hot. Then we'll put a little bit of the garlic, you know, right there. Oh, very simple. And then we put all the vegetables. Now, see, using your cleaver to pick up all the vegetables. See, right from the cutting board. Very simple. And then you get a uh, Chinese spatula. Now, mix it up. Put a little bit of salt. Sprinkle about a quarter teaspoon of salt. And then a little bit of water. Now, there you are. 
and then a little bit of tiny cooking wine. And then that's it. Then you just cover this, let it cook about 30 seconds. And then while you're waiting, very simple, you just dissolve some of the starch, cornstarch, one tablespoonful to one tablespoonful of water, equal amount. Put a little bit light soya sauce, okay? Now, half teaspoonful, and then a few drops of sesame seed oil to add some nice aroma. Chanel number nine. <laughs> And then put a little bit of sugar. Then we are ready. Now, there you are. A lot of smoke coming out now. So just put all the sauce right in there and mix it up. Mix it up, very simple. Now, then you get your plate ready. Mmm. As you can see, Chinese cooking is very simple and quick. All you have to do is just get everything ready and then you can walk up a storm very easily. Now, look at this. This is a saute vegetable just for you and I hope you like this. You see, this is a nice green vegetable. This is called a broccoli. <laughs> I was told that one broccoli a day, you will get all the vitamin C that you need, you know, every day. So you should chew on this every day, and you don't have to swallow all those pills. <laughs> I'm going to show you another technique, how to handle the vegetable, to make them greener and more nutritious. But before I do that, I'd like to show you how to sharpen the cleaver, okay? Now, you don't need a fancy stone or anything. Just get one of these. China plate with a rough bottom edge right there. See, it's made in China. <laughs> then you get your cleaver, hold it properly with two finger here and the thumb on the other side. And all you have to do, just go like this. Now, just like that, this side, and go away from you. Always go away. Otherwise, you will get yourself into a lot of trouble. <laughs> this is the way to sharpen it, okay? Now, then you use it to cut your broccoli. Now, this is the broccoli. And then, first of all, you cut your flower red just like this. Okay, break it off like this. Now, then move it away. Then you get your broccoli stock. Now, don't throw this away. There are many ways to do this. One is cut it into slices just like this. Now, down here. Now, the reason why you want to cut it diagonally is to allow greater surface exposed to the heat, and then it will take a very short time, you know, to cook. Now, so much for the vegetable. And with me, I also have some of the carrot slices and onion uh, squares. Now, let's go to get our friend. His name is Frankie. <laughs> it's a flank sticks, a piece of beef, you know, right here. Now, the reason why I like to use flank sticks because you can see the grain going up and down. And when you slice this, and then you slice it across the grain of the meat, that's all you have to do. If you keep this piece of meat half frozen, that would make your slicing 10 times easier. Now remember, the corner of the knife must be down, and then there you are, and then keep slicing back and forth. Now that's all you have to do. Okay, once you're good, you can go any speed you want. This is called a 10 speed cleaver. <laughs> once you get it, put it there, away you go. Very simple, heat up your wok, and I have a wok full of water right here. It's been boiling, and it's hot. And I put some of the salt there, I put a little bit of salt, about a quarter teaspoonful, a little bit of vegetable oil. That's all you have to do. This is special so that you can keep all the vegetable nice and green and colorful. Now then you put it in there. Once the water starts boiling, that's all you have to do. This is called a branching method. Now, branching. Then you heat up the other wok and ready for your walking. There you are. Always use high heat because the actual cooking time is very, very short. And it doesn't take long at all. Now, okay. Now, wait until the wok is hot, then you can start the cooking. Now, sometimes, while you're waiting, you can prepare your beef a little bit by putting a little bit of the light soy sauce, half teaspoonful, and a little bit of sesame seed oil. Now, that's all you have to do. And then, in order to add some makeup to it, you will use one teaspoonful of the cornstarch or tapioca starch. That's all you have to do, just mix up this. Okay, now you can do this ahead of time. You know, hours ahead of time, or you can do it just before cooking. Now, the wall is hot. You can see the holy smoke coming up. <laughs> two tablespoons of vegetable oil. One and two. Ha! Huh. There you are. Then you put a little bit of garlic. And the onion. There you are. I put it there. Now, make sure the oil is hot. 
before you do the cooking. Otherwise, the food will get stuck to the bottom of the wok. Now, stir it for about 15 seconds. And then you put the beef right in. Just like that. Now, isn't it great? Now, keep turning. Keep turning. Now, you can see how good the wok is. Because right now, all the beef, they're being cooked and being attacked by this hot oil and also the flavor of the garlic and the onion. This is exciting. You don't cook this 100%, you can cook it about 80%. Make them a medium well. Until you don't see the red color, you know, outside. That's almost ready. Now, then you can throw in all those uh, carrots. There you are. Now, isn't that great? Mix it up, you're just like this. And then you get your broccoli. Get a Chinese fishing net. There you are now. See, pick it up. Oh, isn't that good? Good idea. Now, see, now you can strain and drain. Look at how green it is. Just like my cooking, very green. And then you put it right into the beef. That's it, now you mix it up. Oh, isn't that great? And now, don't forget the gourmet sauce, the star solution that I showed you earlier. You just get some of this thing in, and then it would make the food look really shiny and nice. Just a little bit will do wonder. Then you get your plate organized. Look at that. We are getting ourselves ready. Now, you look at the beef right here. All the sauce are boiling and good. And we are all set to go. Just take up your wok. And this dish is excellent. You know, to go with steamed rice or even chow mein noodle. To have more fun. <laughs> there you are. You wear this little hat. <laughs> and then there's a special steam and broccoli for you. Hi, this is a special dish that I normally do on the day before Saturday. We call it a Chinese Air Force Day, which is Fly Day. <laughs> I will be using some rice here. This is the cooked rice that I have steamed this rice, you know, yesterday. And it's all hot and cold. Now, it's very important to use the cold rice because if it is too warm, too sticky, it will stick to the bottom of the wok. Then you're in trouble. All you need, just a couple of this egg here. Just ordinary freshly egg, laid eggs. Why did the chicken uh, lay eggs? Because uh, if he drops it, he will be in trouble. <laughs> anyway, so you use a Chinese egg beater. Look at this. Oh, they come at 10 different speeds. That's all you have to do. Just go back and forth. Just go like this. Oh, go like crazy. That's all you have to do. Okay. Now, then you heat up your wok and you're ready. You know, really, this is very easy to do this. It's a great dish for you to use up all the leftover. For example, you have the leftover, a little bit of uh, green peas, you know, right here, and a little bit of the ham. Just ham it up, small piece. <laughs> and if you don't have ham, you can use uh, roast beef or turkey, barbecue pork, hot dog, sausages, bunny rabbit, whatever you have at home. <laughs> and it'll work, you know, very well. Now, first of all, I like to show you how to fry the egg, the Chinese way, using the wok. Now heat up the wok, and then when it's hot, use one tablespoonful of vegetable oil, just right there. Now you look at this, this is called a wok and roll. <laughs> See, you will smear the surface of the, of the wok, and then that's all you need. And then you get your egg. Now watch the egg now, put it there. Now then you can cook the egg like that if you want to make the egg bigger. Very simple, just tilt the wok. See, there you are. That's a good way to uh, you stretch your budget. You know, there you are. Save a lot of money. Now, see, this is a good way. Just keep going until the egg, you know, becomes solid. You know, there you are. Now, very simple. Oh, yeah. Then you use your spatula. Look at that. Remember this spatula? You need the curve to lift up the egg, just like this. Now, go around like that. Now, I'm going to turn this thing right over there. Now, isn't that great? You got it right there. And then just walk over here. Oh, very simple. Now, just go. Ha! You put your egg right there. And then you go and heat up the wok again. Heat up the wok. Two tablespoonful of vegetable oil now. Very simple. If you are using some uncooked meat, this is the time for you to cook your meat. But I already use, I already cooked this ham. So there you are, just warm it up just like this. The amount of meat depends on how much you like the meat. If you don't like meat, you don't have to put it in. Now then, stir it for a little bit. 
Then put all the rice, right in. Whole rice. Now there you are. And then you walk back to the chopping board to cut your egg. Now there you are. Cut it into small pieces. Now just like this. Now if you have a uh, 20 people to eat this, this is fine. But you have 40, you can do it like this. Now see? <laughs> Multiply. Hey, use your cleaver to pick up the egg. Now see, look at that. One scoop. They walk back to the wall. Now very simple. And then you put a little bit of salt, you know, right there. And a little bit of a green piece. Very simple. Mix it up. Now, I want to show you something. Oh, yes. The green onion. How do you cut the green onion without losing them everywhere? Now, look, this, look at this green onion. All you have to do is get a little rubber band. Okay, now, blue color. So that when you cut your green onion, you can find where your rubber band is. Now, put the other end there and then this loose end here. And use your cleaver this way, all right? Now, rest your cleaver against the knuckle of the hand. Like this, now, go this, now, see now. Then it will not go away. Isn't that great? Fantastic. Just keep going. Now, then we are ready. Now, see, there you are. This is a good technique. Then you walk back to the walk, pick up all those things. Hey, now, there. Just mix all this thing. Oh, yeah. Now, this is the rice, Chinese fried rice. Now, this is warm and nice. And all you have to do now, just stir it up and cook the rice until it gets warm. That's all you have to do. Now, this is a very colorful dish. It's called a Chinese fried rice, just like that. And I hope you like it. Hi, I am going to show you a special dish this time something that you can pick out very easily. This is called a sweet and sour pork. A special tribute to Miss Piggy. <laughs> <laughs> but before I do that, I'd like to give her something very unusual, which is uh, this uh, little carrot right here. Now, this is one carrot. I want to show you what you can do with a little green pepper as well. Now, all you have to do, just do it like this. Do a little cut. Now, just like that. Keep going. And then, we are going to have a lot of fun. Now, there you are. Once you finish this, now just put this right on top of this uh, little thing. It becomes a little palm tree. Now, special uh, tribute to Miss Piggy. Now, how do you like this? <laughs> Great. Now, let's get our pot organized. And turn on the oil. Turn on the stove and heat up the oil and get the thing going. Now, we need about 12 ounces of pork cubes. Any kind of pork will do, okay? I'm using the pork butts because I'm walking my butts off. <laughs> See, there you are. And all you have to do is just crack an egg. Now, watch this here now. This is a good way to crack your egg. Now, crack it and then watch this finger. Now, look at this. I'll spread this thing open. Now, See, it comes out. No problem. And then you will put some of this the cornstarch, you know, right on. There you are. Put it right on. Oh, mix them up to cover it up. I call this the Watergate dish. Cover up. <laughs> the Watergate. Isn't that great? Now, you just mix all those things. Oh, this is a good way to do it, you know, really. Now, all right. Now, then just mix this, keep going. And then you walk over to the wall. Now, you deep fry this. You can do this ahead of time. Now, you heat up some oil there. And you have to get a thermometer to test the temperature of the oil. And I have a good way to show you. Now, let me show you this. Use a bamboo chopstick. Now, you see the bubble around the chopstick? And that means it's ready. Hey, never use plastic chopsticks. If you do, you'll get into like this. Now, that's awful, isn't it, right? Ah, now, this uh, that becomes a hook up uh, uh, chopsticks, and it's good for a hooking thing. And we call it a hook up. It's just like this. Eh? Now, then what happens? Then, when it's ready, then you get all the pork, and then put it right into the hot oil. Now, one at a time. See, now look at that. How well it pops out. Oh, look at that. Miss Piggy doesn't like this at all. He's complaining now. Okay. Actually, sweet and sour pork is very easy to make and very economical to make. See? If you don't have pork, you can use a spare rib or you can substitute with chicken. That becomes the chicken ball. See? They, they, they all had a ball, you know, right here. All right. Let's keep going. Oh, see how fast they Oh, dump the whole thing in one at a time. Then we are ready. Now, then you cook them until they turn into kind of a dark brown color. Then we are ready. There you are. You see how easy it is? Now, you can do this in a matter of about four to five minutes, you know, if you get
get everything organized ahead of time. Now, okay, now, they're all ready, and then all you have to do is just get one of the Chinese fishing nets. There you are. Now, they become golden brown in color now. All red and ready to go. And crunchy too. Now, there, there you are. Beautiful, isn't it, right? Now, then what we do, we just uh, put this to the side. Not quite ready yet. Then you make your sauce, hey? How do you make your sauce? Very simple. You just use uh, one tablespoonful of this uh, cornstarch. All right, I put it right here so that you can see what the heck is going on. <laughs> one tablespoonful of this, okay? And then use some water. Or you need just uh, about a quarter of a cup of water. Depends on how much sauce you want. If you want more sauce, you add more water. That's the way to go. <laughs> and then the secret is making this uh, sweet sauce. Using one part of vinegar to three parts of sugar. Now one, two, three. Very simple. And then you use a little bit what we call the tomato paste. Or in the United States, sometimes they call them tomato puree. It's the same thing. If you don't have puree or paste, you can use uh, uh, ketchup and then you just add a little bit of uh, color to it. Then it becomes a very fantastic dish. Now all you have to do now is just heat up a little wok, heat it up, and then put this uh, little sauce right there. Now this is a small steel wok. The wok that you have to season for a little while with soap and water. And always dry your wok after you use. Otherwise it will go rusty. But anyway, you clean it up, look after it well, and just like the cast iron uh, frying pan, it would go really, really well. Okay, now you cook this until it comes to a boil. Then you put all those uh, cut up carrot, uh, carrot slices, and red pepper, you know there? And then if you like, you can add some of the green pepper. Okay, cut it up. Now the one that I use from the palm tree. There you are. Don't, we don't waste nothing. You see, we shouldn't waste the food. We should use them up and make sure, you know, they are well used and don't throw it away. Now, mix it until it comes to a boil. It's coming now. It's getting there. It's getting there. Now, I just see some extra people coming for dinner. So add more water. You see? <laughs> this is so flexible. You know, there you are. Oh, okay. You can adjust your sauce any way you want. It's so easy and simple. Just use a little bit imagination and work on it. Now, all you have to do now, just return all the pork that you just deep fry and mix it up. Mix it up and away you go. Now see, there you are. And then, you just get your plate organized using a little bit of this tree. Now you can cut it down to size so that everybody can see this. Ah, isn't that great? Okay, now, then, all you have to do is just mix this. Now, don't forget the wok because the wok will really get everything done very easily. This is the sweet and sour pork, the yen style, colorful and tasty, and I hope you like it. Hi! Look at it! Oh, the eagle has landed! <laughs> Well, there you are. I want to show you how to handle this chicken. Boy, I'm going to show you how to make a real Ramo chicken and show you my way of deboning the chicken. Eh? All right, now let's get the chicken to the side here and then switch it for a left chicken breast, you know, right here. Okay, now there you are. We are using the chicken breast to make the lemon chicken. One little chicken breast can feed the whole family. Family of 20. That's my family. <laughs> Now, I want to show you how to debone this. First of all, you get hold of the chicken breast. This is the chicken breast rib. At the bottom of the rib cage, there's a hole there. Okay, now there you are where you can stick your finger in. See, that's what the hole's for. And then you stick the finger in all the way until you see yourself. Hi, I'm here. <laughs> then you move forward. Hey, now see, it's always there. Then you expose the inside muscle. This is the inside muscle. I call the inside muscle because it's hidden inside. <laughs> now, then you use the thumb underneath and just lift it up. Now, isn't that fun? Oh, boy. And then lift it up. Now, there you are. When you see the white tendon here, you just hang on to the white tendon and pull this thing. The whole thing is off. Now, half the chicken breast is done. See, it's all lopsided now, so it's done. Now, good thing the chicken has the other side so that we can repeat the same procedure.
Now, at the lower rib cage, you will always find a hole, you know, here. Always right there, okay? Now, in case you can't find the hole from the bottom, you can always go to the top. There's a hole, I call it a spare hole, just like the car. They have a spare tire. <laughs> you stick your thumb there and then go down like this. Now, you can expose the inside muscle, the same. And then you lift it up with your thumb again. Just go like this. Oh, and you see the white tendon? See the white tendon, how easy it is? And then hang on and then pull it off. Now, here's the dramatic part now. You just hang on to this chicken breast. In front of the chicken breast, there is a little membrane. Okay, now then you just stick the two thumb there, exert a little bit of pressure. Ah, this is a tough chicken. Now just go, <laughs> once you see yourself, just lie here and then turn it over here. Now it becomes a nice uh, little chicken. Now I put the chicken breast right there and then you can use the chicken uh, bone and then make an excellent, you know, uh, soup. All right, now the only bone that you have left is the collarbone, you know, right here. No problem. Okay. <laughs> We just take this thing off, and then you get the whole chicken breast ready to go. Okay, now we get our oil organized, and then let's get our chicken organized. Now, put down the chicken breast here to the corner. I want to show you how to save money. There you are, cut it into half first. Now, this is a half the chicken breast. Now, I'm going to show you how to thin this very carefully. Now, this is an excellent clever cleaver, and you should <laughs> never walk without it. You know, and you should always have one. Now, just hang on, hold your cleaver properly, two finger here and a thumb here, and use the palm down here, and make sure the angle of the cleaver goes down, and I go like this, just like playing your violin. Da, 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 you know, just like this. Now, this is half the chicken breast. Once you have done it, it becomes a full chicken breast. Why not? If you have more people, just keep on going until you can't get it anymore. Then you can feed the whole army in the United States. There you are. Once you get that, then you just uh, do a little bit scoring and then so that it won't be tough for you. All right, now get another one. Repeat the same procedure so that you can have four pieces of chicken for your dish. All right, now this is very simple to do. After you have done that, all you have to do now is to get your batter mix. Very simple. You need one egg. Right, see, I get that chicken before she lays the egg. So I get the egg, you know, right here. And beat it up and use a half cup of flour. You know, ordinary flour will be fine. All purpose, all purpose, you know, flour. And then a half cup of water. Oh, mix this thing together. That's it. And then use quarter teaspoonful of baking powder. There you are, so that the chicken will fluff out way nicely. And no problem, you know, just like that. Ah, then that's it. Now then you heat up your oil. Make sure your oil is hot. Okay, now there you are. Sometimes, if you want to make the chicken uh, more crispy, what you do is this. You add some of the cornstarch, you know, about oh, a quarter of a cup of cornstarch. Then the whole crust will become very, very crispy. And it's an excellent way, you know, to show off your chicken, you know, really. Okay? Now, in China, we use chicken all the time. Because we believe the, chi the chicken is not fattening. It gives you a lot of protein. And there's so many ways to uh, get your chicken, you know, attack your chicken. Unfortunately, in you know, the chicken, they don't stay still. <laughs> Why do the chicken cross the road? Because the colonel is chasing after her. <laughs> <laughs> and also, you know, in the winter time, you know, they, all the birds, they fly south. You know why? Because it's too far to walk. That's the reason. <laughs> now, then you get your oil, make sure it's ready. Then you use a thermometer again. Now, use this uh, Chinese thermometer. The bamboo chopstick, never use plastic chopstick, okay? When you see a lot of bubble, that's ready. Then you get your chicken, now walk over here, and get yourself organized, get your chicken breast, put it there, and then use this uh, chopstick. Now, there you are, put it there, and then pick this thing up. Now, then you put it right there. See how easy it is, you know, to make up your cooking. Now, there's one piece of chicken. Now, then you turn that. Now, see, it's very fluffy already. Good chicken, just like the colonel said. <laughs> All right, now then you go to the, the next one. Now this procedure can be done ahead of time. You can do this. Hours ahead of time to keep your chicken warm in the oven. And then just before you serve it, then you make your sauce. And that's all. Okay, now there you are. I'm using 
four pieces of chicken. Now there's a lot of chicken right here. Okay, and cook that until they become golden brown in color. Then the whole thing is ready. Very simple and ready for Freddy. That's it. <laughs> now, while we are waiting for the chicken to get done, we can make our sauce. And I have a very simple way and easy way to make your lemon sauce. Okay, now just watch me. All you have to do, just get a little bowl. Ha! Huh. And I have a name for this bowl. It's called Derek. It becomes <laughs> bowl Derek. <laughs> That's right. Now then you just use uh, one tablespoon of this cornstarch or tapioca starch and add some water. Okay, now depends on how much sauce you want. Normally I will use a quarter of a cup of water so that you have a lot of sauce. And then you use a little bit of vinegar. One part of vinegar, now you can use one tablespoonful. And then three parts of sugar. Okay, there you are now. Three tablespoonful. Now one, two, three. Depends on the size of your table, of course. <laughs> then you use a little bit of lemon extract to give you a lot of lemon flavor and smell. Quarter teaspoonful. Now, in order to make the chicken look very good, send suntan, you use it with <laughs> suntan lotion. No, this is really a uh, food coloring to add some color to it. Now, that's all you have to do. Now, then we are ready. That's all for your lemon sauce. And all you have to do is heat up another wok. Always use your stainless steel wok to make the sauce. If you use an ordinary iron or steel wok, they will go rusty very quickly. All right? Now, use one teaspoonful of oil there in the heat up wok. And then you put all the sauce, you know, right down there. And then cook it until it comes to a boil. Isn't that simple and easy? Now, then you will get your, all the special plate, you know, right here. And now I have a little pig, you know, lemon pig, which I will show you in the volume two of my uh, Chinese cooking cassette called the walk on the wild side. <laughs> so you want to learn how to make this. Just keep an eye on the, the other tape called the wall on the wide side, and I'll show you how. Okay? Now, all you have to do now, just get a little fishing net, and get your chicken out. There you are. Oh, this is nice brown chicken. You know, they're all there. Oh, very simple. Oh, this is a terrific. Now, you can cut it up. Yeah, that's right. Good. You can cut it up if you want, or you can serve it one whole piece like this. You know, this is really brown chicken. Oh boy, I'm telling you. Okay, I'm, I hope the colonel will use my recipe, you know, to make it good. <laughs> now then, there you are. And then all you have to do now, oh, just put the sauce. The sauce that you just prepare, you know, it's boiling nicely. And pour it right on top of this real lemon chicken. And I hope like this, especially just for you. Now, I'm going to show you another chicken dish so that you can utilize the whole chicken that I have shown you earlier. This one, we are not going to do anything serious. We are going to do it very casually. It's called a cashew chicken. <laughs> That's right. This is an excellent dish because one dish of this, you can feed about 40 people if you want because everything is diced up into smaller pieces. And it's not expensive either. You see, people talk about expensive diamond and say diamonds are the girl's best friend. You see, actually, as a man, I don't think it's fair at all. You see, the girls, they get the diamond as their best friend, and we get, you know what is our best friend? The dogs. So what <laughs> our dog is the best friend. I don't think it's fair. And I have a 14 carat here to show you. Right here, 14. Now you can't get <laughs> All 14. Now it becomes my best friend. Oh, this is exciting. Now all this carrot, I already diced them into smaller pieces, just like this. This is called a dicey situation. <laughs> now let me show you how to dice this. This is excellent because this, this nice little carrot now, I am not going to spend 14 carrot, you know, just for you. I'm going to spend only one carrot, okay? Just to show you how economical it can be. See, very simple. You hold your cleaver and just go like this. Now cut it into smaller pieces using the small baby carrot. Isn't it great? You know, it's fantastic. Just like that. Ah, if you have more people coming for dinner, 
just cut them into smaller ones, just like this, eh? Now that is it, you know, this is excellent for the budgeting, see? Chinese cooking is very economical, and I just happen to have a whole bunch of them right here. Now, and I want, I want to show you something called a baby corn. This is a little baby corn. You, you see how small it is? That's why it's called a baby corn. This is a special vegetable that you will peel the outside and then cook the inside. And after you cook it, you eat the outside and then throw away the inside. I hope you get that. <laughs> That's supposed to be a joke. Okay, there you are. And when you eat this baby corn, don't eat the kernel one at a time. Otherwise, you'll be here until Christmas. <laughs> you know, oh, by the way, you know what? What do you think the baby corn uh, called the father corn? You know how do you, how do you call it? It's called the popcorn. <laughs> <laughs> popcorn, that's the father corn. All right, cut it into smaller pieces. There you are. And then I happen to have some of these uh, mushroom. Oh, mushroom is great. Now, this is a fresh mushroom. I just brought it out from my garden. Oh, it's so fresh. You can smell everything, you know, from the <laughs> mushroom. <laughs> if you don't have fresh mushroom, you can use the one from the can. Why not? But I, I always prefer to have the fresh one. And also, in order to make the situation more dicey, <laughs> I dice up some of this cucumber. Okay, now there you are. Then this is uh, roughly about uh, 50 dices, so that's good for 50 people. <laughs> now, show your nice, clever cleaver here. Show how you can pick it up just like this, eh? Now there you are. Now there's one way of doing it. Very simple. All right, also you can use a cleaver. You clean your board, see, like this. Clean everything up. Also you can go to the bank and ask for a loan. <laughs> <laughs> or go to see your boss. I want a race. You will get all you want. This is called a clever cleaver. And nobody should walk without it. <laughs> now then the next thing, another dicey situation, is this uh, chicken. Look at that, all oh, dice up into smaller pieces. Okay, now, you can use any kind of chicken. You can use chicken breast or chicken leg, any part. Just cut them up into small pieces like this. And marinate it, marinate it. Okay? That's what it is now. Before I marinate, I just turn on some uh, gas to heat up my wok so that we can have some oil to cook our cashew nut. Now, okay, let's go to the marination. All right, what do we do? We use a little bit. Chanel number no. 9, Chinese style. Sesame Street oil. Sesame Street. There you are. Few drops. And then you put a bit light soy sauce. Light color, remember? Light soy sauce, salty, but doesn't stain the food that you're cooking. About half teaspoonful. That would be good. And then you use a bit Chinese cooking wine. Just a little bit. To add some of the tenderness to the chicken. So that you would it would uh, really taste good. And any time you cook chicken, you should always use a few slices of ginger root. Now, now, look at this now. Hold your cleaver, leave the corner of the cleaver down, and then mix slices like this. Ginger root is hot, so if you want to make sure that everybody will like it and not chopping up and down, you can slice <laughs> it or sliver it just like this, so that the whole thing would be good to eat. Now you can pick it up with your cleaver, just like that. Now, we are ready. We are ready. Heat up some oil there, then we are ready. Now, make sure the oil is ready. Put a thermometer there, Chinese thermometer. A lot of bubble, so that you have no trouble. And get some of this nut. Now, this cashew nut is really nutty, because <laughs> before it is cooked like this, it is all white. And once it hits the hot oil, it will turn brown very quickly. You have to make sure that you turn that all the time, keep on turning. See, there you are, this is weird. We, that's why we call them nuts. <laughs> see, there you are, you pick it up now. See, there you are, it's all brown now. That's all ready. Oh, see, nothing to it. Very quick and easy. Hey, there you are, now pick them up. Then we are ready. And then keep going. Then we help the other walk. Oh, this is going to be so fast. So easy, so economical. And most of all, it's the nutritious. That's the important part. Now, what about the oil that you just use for deep fry? You can reuse it again and then just walk over like, from this little wok and walk to the big wok. Now, one tablespoon, just like this. One here and walk over to the other into the hot wok. That's all you need. Now, then you use a little bit of the ginger that we just slice up. Everything is hot. Then you put all the chicken right in. And there you are. 
Oh, this is great. Now, this is a lot of smoke. Hi, I'm here. <laughs> now, see, there you are. So, this is called the holy smoke. Now, you just go like this. Ah, this is a dicey situation, isn't it? Right? Now, keep going until all those the chicken, you know, they are well done. Okay, I put this thing right here for the time being. And then, keep going. Oh, now, isn't that great? Now, look at this uh, little chicken. All in the queue. Very nice and stir fry. Oh, very easy to do. And then all you have to do now, after a minute or so, you put all the vegetables in. All the little corn and carrot and uh, onion and mushroom and cucumber. Everything. Put it in. Now, after you put it in, what do you do now? You put a little bit of salt, quarter teaspoonful, sprinkle it. And don't forget a little bit of Chinese cooking wine, just like this, hey? If you don't have Chinese cooking wine, you can use dry sherry. Okay? Surely, surely. That's what it is. Okay. Now you keep going. Keep turning this. And then you make a little bit of sauce. Remember the sauce I showed you earlier? That's the sauce that we use to make with starch and water, light soy sauce, oyster sauce, pinch of sugar, and also drops of sesame seed oil. Now you put it in there, and then wait until it comes to a boil. Now cook this, you know, because all those vegetables are nice and crunchy, you don't have to cook it that long. Now just like that. And then you return all the nuts, the cashew nuts, put it back, right there. Now then what happened? You will get your plate. Oh, we are ready. We are all ready. Just mix this thing up. Then you have this beautiful, nutritious, and most economical dish called the cashew nut chicken. Nothing serious, especially for you. I hope you like it. A one tea. That's what they say in Italy. Come on down. Your price is right. The Italian, you know, they really learn a lot from the Chinese. When Marco Polo went to China, you know what he did? We showed them how to make chow mein noodle. We showed them how to make wonton. By the time when he went back to Italy, he learned how to do make it all right, but he forgot the name. He changed the name chow mein to spaghetti, <laughs> and changed the wonton to ravioli. Isn't that ridiculous? What the heck? I'm going to make one thing perfectly clear. <laughs> I want to make this thing really Right and correct. I don't want to make it the wrong way. I want to make it the yen way. Okay. <laughs> now, first of all, we need some of this uh, egg noodle, soft noodle. Now, the different form of noodle you buy in the market, some of them, they're hot. You have to dissolve in hot water and pick it up and rinse it under running cold water after you boil for about a couple of minutes. Now, there's another kind, which is a kind of a half steam up for you already. You can buy in a frozen form. And you, when you take it home, just throw it out and then, you know, soften it like this and put it in the hot water for about one minute to blanch it a little bit, then dry it up and it becomes like this. Very simple. Now, I'm going to show you a dish called the chicken chow mein. First of all, you need some chicken. Chicken sliver, your know, slices, whatever you have. You can use any kind of chicken you want. Right now, I have about 12 ounces of chicken. That's a lot of chicken, you know, right here. And then in order to make the dish look good, I have some of these carrot slivers, you know, like this, eh? This is about 200 pieces of here, plus uh, 500 pieces of noodle, so you can feed 700 people. <laughs> if you have more people, you can use some of this uh, called a bean sprout. Very easy to grow, and a mushroom, and the snow peas. Now, if you don't have snow peas, you can use anything green, like the uh, broccoli, or celery, or even asparagus, and cook it up. It's very flexible, okay? And you can use anything you want. As a matter of fact, if you don't have chicken, you can use turkey. Once it is all cut up, they will all look alike. <laughs> See? They look make fun of us. But the, I find that cooking is a very good way to make friends. Because once you have the food in your mouth, you cannot argue anymore. <laughs> My mother told me, get cooking, and then you can make friends from people from all walks of life. 
That's what she told me. All right, let's get cooking then. Otherwise, I become a walkie-talkie. <laughs> All right, heat up the wok, and then use about one to two tablespoons of oil. Now, this is a, quite a lot of uh, heat on the wok. And then, then you put all those uh, noodles in. Now you have to cook the noodle a little bit. In the Chinese restaurant cooking, we like to brown our noodle a little bit so that we can bring out the egg flavor of the noodle. Okay? If you're doing this at home, I recommend you to spend some time and keep an eye on the noodle and don't leave it there too long. And uh, just slightly brown it, you will see a little bit brown spot on the noodle but not black. Once you burn your noodle, don't mention my name. <laughs> because I said brown it, not uh, burn it. Okay, now this is the way to do it. Very simple. Now, this is the egg noodle. If you don't like egg noodle or you cannot get egg noodle, you can actually use Marco Polo's noodle. It's called the oodles of noodles. That's what I have, you know, right here. What can noodle do? Okay. You can use a rice noodle or spaghetti, any kind of noodle you want. Just cook it the way I show you, that would be okay. Too bad Marco Polo is not here anymore, otherwise you can learn this dish. Cook that, and then we are ready. All right, now then we'll just turn off the heat so that we can keep the noodle all nice and uh, hot. Then what do we do? We help heat up another wok, and then get ourselves organized. Marinate our chicken. Okay, use a little bit light soy sauce. There you are half teaspoonful, and then use of the Chinese Chanel number no. 9, sesame street oil. And then use a little bit Chinese cooking wine. Okay, a little bit. Away we go. We are ready. You heat up the wok. Okay, then two tablespoonful of oil. One, and then two. Now, we're accurate. <laughs> Actually, <laughs> you don't have to be that accurate. You know, just two rounds of oil, and that would be alright. This is the beauty of the wok cooking, you see. You don't need too much oil. All the oil will go to the center of the wok. That's all you have to do. Now, then you get a little piece of a ginger root. Cut that into small slices, three slices. And then cut it into sliver so that you can cook your chicken, you know, well. Now, just like this. Very simple and exciting. Now, a little bit. That's all you have to do. Put it to the wok. And then you can put the chicken in. Okay, now there you are. All the chicken, oh, nice, just like that. Now this is a excellent dish because it doesn't cost that much, but it can really give you a very fulfilling dish. You eat the noodle, the noodle is very fulfilling. Now when you order Chinese food, any time when you order noodle, don't order rice, otherwise you will be completely fed up. You know, <laughs> make sure you know you are. Organize yourself and uh, don't put any more noodle in your recipe or menu when you have already have the fried rice or steamed rice in. Now, okay, then you put all the colorful vegetable, carrot, mushroom, bean sprout, and uh, snow peas. There you are. Mix them and put a little bit of salt and then put a little bit of water. If you have chicken broth, by all means, you'll put it in. Now, then you get a little bit the starch lotion, the one I showed you how to make that in the previous dishes. I'll just put it there until it comes to a boil. Then you get your plate and get your noodle, get your noodle organized. Put your noodle there, okay, before you put your chicken. In order to celebrate this, I have a special hat, you know, right here. <laughs> now, just like that. And then you wait until all this sauce comes to a boil. Isn't that great? Now, there it comes to a boil and then you're ready. Then all you have to do now, just walk over to the noodle and pour this thing right on top. There you are, a special chicken chow mein, the yen style, just for you and I hope you like this. If you think that was fun, Wait until you see volume 2, called The Walk on the Wild Side. <laughs> I'll be showing you dishes that are even more fun. They're also fast and incredibly easy to make. Would you believe this was wonderfully walking only 50 minutes? Ooh. That's very good for a seven-course meal. Wow. It's true. <laughs> and it's guaranteed 
to impress anybody, including your boss, your boss's boss, and even your great auntie Rose, who doesn't like anything. I will also show you how to do this creative carving to dress up your dishes. Believe me, all auntie Rose will be green with envy. Unless, of course, she buys what on the wild side before you do. Walk on the wild side, coming soon to a video player near you. Now, I have a very special offer for you, so you can create all these wonderful dishes. Do you wish you had a cleaver like the kind Stephen Yan uses? Do you wish you had easy to read Chinese cookbooks? Do you wish you had chopsticks that work? Well, your wishes can come true thanks to a special mail order offer. Soon you'll be cleaving like a bro with your very own Yan cleaver. You'll love Stephen's best selling books. And the anti hunger devices make sure you get every bite. Stephen Yan's special cleaver is only $6. Stephen's best-selling books, Chinese Recipes and Vegetables a Chinese Way, are only $5 each. And the anti-hunger devices sell for only $2 a piece. Items can be ordered individually for the cost of each item, plus postage and handling. Or all four items can be ordered for only $21. Send your check or money order to Walk With Yan, P.O. Box 100, Bellingham, Washington, 98227-0100. If you want to say charge it, Visa and MasterCard are also accepted. And remember, this offer expires December 31st, 1994. Stephen saves the day again. Thank you. Here we walk again. Goodbye.